This next question is from Bonnie. What is the solution to constant heartburn and indigestion after eating? Oh, I like that one. You have a whole you probably, have, yeah. you probably have a hiatus hernia. That's what I guess you have a hiatal hernia, which is uh, ha happens. So what happens is the, the stomach is pushed up from the abdominal cavity into the thoracic cavity. So it's pushed up through the diaphragm and the hole in the diaphragm through which the esophagus passes is enlarged and a large hole in the muscles called a hernia. So you develop a hiatal hernia. So part of the stomach ends up in the chest. In that case, whenever you lie down, whenever you bend over, whenever you overeat, what happens is you push stomach contents up into the esophagus and it burns, all right? The way you deal with this, well, you can find a surgeon that'll pull your stomach back down into the abdominal cavity, put a couple of stitches in it, and all that may be the one way you want to go. But I'll tell you the way I would go and the way I'd recommend my patients go is they'd take and eliminate the things that cause indigestion, all right? Meat, dairy. The stomach has to produce a tremendous amount of acid to digest the proteins in either one of these food substances. Uh, oils you know, cause a, a lot of trouble, a lot of uh, uh, difficulty in the intestinal tract. So I would get those out of the diet. There are certain vegetables that I would avoid, uh, raw vegetables of any kind. I'd eat all my food cooked. But in particular, onions, green peppers, cucumbers, and radishes cause terrible indigestion. I can't eat raw onions. It ruins the rest of my day. I have two slices of raw onions. I'm done for the afternoon and in the evening. Finally, I recover the next day because there's a couple of gases that are in the uh, raw onions that are boiled off, by the way. So if you cook the onion, onions, it won't bother you. But in raw onions, there are a couple of gaseous substances that cause horrible indigestion. So I'd get any raw food on my diet. I would get onions, green peppers, cucumbers, and radishes out. And, and then what I'd do is I'd raise the head of the bed because even though you know what you're saying is it happens when you eat, well, there's some of the time when you spend laying down in bed where gravity can work to your advantage and keep the esophagus in a state of healing uh, when it's not being bathed by stomach acids. And you do that by using gravity. You take, you raise the head of your bed. Boop, boop, boop. I can't get that right. Anyway, you do a, you raise the head of your bed about four inches on blocks so that you are laying at an angle when you sleep at night. Not bent now, like, you know, that's the bent position, okay? You don't want to do that, but you want to be flat. You want to lay like that four inches on the head of the bed. And that should help. And then the next thing you go on to is you go on to wafer antacids like Tums. You know, there are several different kinds, but Tums is the most common taken because Tums is calcium-based, causes constipation. Malcolm magnesia, which is another antacid, is magnesium-based, which causes diarrhea. So, you know, you're going to have some adverse effects from these uh, these wafer or liquid antacids. And then the next step I would take is I'd use H2 blockers. But almost always just fixing the food, raising the head of your bed is all you need. 